All right, we are recording, and you might notice something just a teeny weeny bit different about this UI, especially if you look down here at the scoreboards. You might notice this little fireball next to Twilight's uh, next to Twilight's little T there. And if I tap the control key here, look at that, fireballs. I made them yellow for Twilight because I wanted her to have a unique color. And let's see, um, orange was taken by Sizzle Citrine, that uh, orange gem enemy. Blue was taken by, let's see, I think it was called uh, Spark Sapphire, the blue enemy. The purple enemy, Blast Amethyst, was using the purple fireballs. Um, let's see, I believe it was, uh, yes, Carbon Copier, the boss from the boiler room who took up the red ones. So that leaves green and yellow for Twilight, and yellow, you now that's got more connotations with goodness than green does when it comes to fire, I'll tell you that much. So that's that, but Twilight has another trick up her sleeve. If I pr press the tab key, then, as you can see, the icon changes to this uh, sparking projectile here, which Rarity has as well. So it's just a little bit more subtle. And now if I hold down the control key, as you can see, this little laser beam is coming out of Twilight's horn. And Rarity can do this too. Not bad for a fashionista, eh? Okay, might as well show you guys these attacks in action just a little bit more. Take out Tanzanite Trooper here. Switch to Twilight. Take out Spark uh, Sapphire. Take out Patrol Agate. It's really not that much more effective than Twilight's regular attacks when you get down to it, but I think that's okay, at least at this point. Although it will let you fire downwards. Take out Turquoise Trooper there. Rough Ruby. Float Peridot. Now I know what you Steven Universe uh, fans are thinking. It's Peridot, not Peridot. Technically, either pronunciation is legit. You know, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, and Pinkie Pie do not yet have any special abilities. They don't yet have any custom attacks, but that'll come. Uh, there isn't mana in the game yet, but again, that will come as well. I'll probably call it energy instead of mana. But uh, you get the idea of how this works in the game. Tab cycles through the attacks that are at your disposal. Control fires them. At this point, I think it's a good idea to show you how this works in the editor. It'll be under playable characters, and when you hit edit on a playable character here, then you may notice that there's more tabs, and indeed more rows of tabs here. Okay, um, the attack tab here works almost exactly the same way as the attack tab works for custom NPCs. Uh, one big difference is that instead of an icon saying how the attack is triggered, there's an icon way over here that shows what icon will be at the bottom of the screen when the given attack is selected. I've got two attacks here, Flame and Stun Ray. And uh, Stun Ray is actually based off of, uh, let's see, what was that tabletop game? Tales of Equestria, maybe? Yeah, they called the Unicorn's Beam Attack Stun Ray in that, so I'm continuing that tradition. Um, so as you can see, there's two fireballs for Twilight's uh, Flame Attack, and there's just the one Thunder Ray for her Stun Ray. And once again, there's sub-attacks underneath an attack. And 
the interesting thing about this is that there are multiple different ways um, that the game can react to you pressing the control key. If you choose tap, then basically that means the attack will only go off if the user is holding the control key for less than 0.3 seconds. Trigger during hold is the user is supposed to hold the control key down and after maybe 0.3 seconds of holding the control key down, the attack will fire away. Hold then fire to release means you're supposed to hold it down for longer than 0.3 seconds and then after you release the control key, the attack will fire. Hold for rapid fire, which I have for both flame and stun ray, means hold the control key down and the attack will just continuously fire. And let's just preview the whole attack here. It works about the same way that uh, previewing for the attack works for um, custom NPCs. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Oh well. Um, as you can see, most of the same controls are here. Um, there, but uh, the targeting is just a little bit different. Instead of left and right, you have forward and backward. And auto target stop and auto target pass, those are very similar to targeting the player. But what happens is um, if you choose auto target or auto target pass, what the game will do is it will send a thunder ray targeting the center of the nearest enemy or the nearest custom NPC, whichever one is closer. And um, it's not going to lock on to that NPC and follow the NPC around, or uh, the enemy as the case may be. Uh, it'll just target the location of the NPC or enemy and continuously fire, uh, at least for as long as the duration holds. And the way I've got it working is, for this particular case, is it's continuously firing different beams. It, it looks continuous to you, the player, but it's realistically multiple different beams. Uh, the cooldown for the whole attack is uh, 0.175 seconds, and it's 0.2 seconds as far as the duration goes. So if you keep holding down control, she'll keep firing uh, thunder ray after thunder ray, and it will look as if it was perfectly... Um, perfectly continuous. I obviously do the same thing for rarities. Uh, I chose a gradient of color that was consistent with the color of Twilight's magic in the TV show. I use a bolt count of two and a very narrow ray width. That's one of the plus sides of this. If you want it to be a beam instead of electricity, then you give it a very narrow width. If you give it a wide width, then it's going to look like uh, electricity all over again. But uh, it, it all depends on what kind of effect you're looking for visually. For Twilight's and Rarity's cases, I want the narrow beam. And fireballs... They're just about the same. Except uh, there's only two choices here. There's movement, direction, and absolute. Instead of pointing towards the um, player, pointing towards the direction that the NPC is moving, and absolute. Here it's movement, direction, and absolute, and movement, direction is the default. As for selecting the icon here, it's actually pretty much the same as any other uh, way of doing this. Now look, Twilight's got a giant nose for the icon for her attack. I don't think so. But it's funny. Classic elements. You can pick uh, this lick of flame. You can pick a much more minimalistic flame. For shmup powers here, you can pick uh, ripple shot. You can pick... Uh, Let's see, wave shot, spiral shot, bouncing shot. You know, that one, that one's pretty fitting for her uh, bouncing fireball attack, but since I want to emphasize that it's fire, I'll just stick with the fireball. And you can change the color to whatever you want. 
I think yellow fits a little bit better. I might, you know, since you can customize the colors a bit, I might make it a slightly orangey yellow. Yeah. That might show up a little bit better. And just to show you what rarities looks like, um, it's again just the one stun ray, just the one sub attack in there. Pretty much the same stats. Arcane damage, slightly narrower beam, slightly narrower color. I wanted there to be hints of Cyan here and there in her beam because that's pretty much the way her magic works and it's a little less monotonous than keeping it grayscale. At first I wanted it to be grayscale but then I realized no there's got to be a little Cyan in there. So essentially custom attacks are now in place for playable characters. I think one of the next things that I'm going to do after this is I'm going to set it up so that there will be defenses against attacks, at least for custom NPCs. And I want to do that at the same time as I'm introducing a new type of projectile. I think that it's going to work close to the same way that fireballs will uh, in terms of the gameplay, but in terms of uh, the way it looks and the bells and whistles attached to the way it looks, I think that that's going to be a little bit more elaborate. I'm going to call it Geochrist and uh, as the name implies, it'll be geometric and crystal shaped, and it will be perfect for earth type attacks or ice type attacks, which uh, will round out the whole fire, uh, ice, and lightning thing that I ought to be having at this point. So that's basically it.